In this question, we're going to determine the range of a quadratic function over a restricted domain between negative 1 less than x less than or equal to 2. Now, we're used to graphing functions like this in um, over the domain all real numbers. So, just as a start, I'd like to graph this function over the domain all real numbers. Um, and we'll worry about restricting that domain later. That's how I like to approach these questions. Well, this is a function given to us in vertex form. Clearly the uh, vertex of this parabola is 1, 5, and it opens up because 3 is positive. So we can graph that, vertex of 1, 5 down here, and it opens up. Now, the uh, endpoints of the domain, the end values of the domain, are negative 1 and positive 2. So I'm going to figure out what the y value equals when x is negative 1, and I'm going to figure out what the y value equals when x is positive 2 in this equation. So we start with x equaling negative 1. When x is negative 1, y is 17. So we can imagine that point up here somewhere. That's the point, negative 1, 17. And when x is positive 2, y is 8. We can imagine that point right about here somewhere. 2, 8. And of course we have the vertex down here, which is 1, 5. Okay? And so what I'm interested in, in actuality, isn't the range of the entire curve. I'm only interested in the range of the curve in this general vicinity here. Okay? Specifically, I'm interested in the range of that part of the curve. So uh, it's probably helpful if we redraw our graph and only include this part of the curve, which we've done here. Okay? Um, we've got the point 28, the point 15, and the point negative 117. Now we go back to our original domain for a moment and we realize the domain says negative 1 is less than x. So x is never actually equal to negative 1. So at an x value of negative 1, uh, we should have an open circle. See, negative 1 is not technically in this domain. It's right on the boundary of it, though. So whatever the y value is associated with negative 1 isn't actually uh, part of what we're trying to determine at that point right there. So because there's no equal to sign under that less than, we put an open circle right there. Okay. Now, how about that 2? Well, that 2, we do have a less than or equal to 2, so we're going to put a closed circle there. And so our job becomes to see if we can figure out the range of that. And uh, we can do that. We see that um, right here, that open circle, uh, if I viewed only its verticality on the y-axis, it would be right about there. From here, uh, we would uh, follow along the curve, and in a vertical sense, these y values could be represented on the y-axis as such. Okay, We'd go from 17 all the way down to this y value here, which is 5. And then back up to 8. Okay, So, uh, just to repeat, um, starting at the top, going down to the vertex and back up, we see that we're actually shading in this part of the y-axis. And so our job becomes to state what is this part of the y-axis. And um, we see that it has a low value of 5 and a high value of 17. So we state our range. 5 less than y less than 17. And then our job becomes to determine whether these numbers, whether we should have less than or equal to signs or just less than signs. Well, this is how we're going to figure it out. We ask ourselves, does the number 17 actually appear in the range? And the only way to answer whether 17 actually appears in the range is to ask yourself whether the x value that produces 17 actually appears in the domain. Well, the only x value that's producing 17 in this relevant part of the curve is a negative 1. Okay? So negative 1 as an x value produces 17 as a y value. Now y is dependent on x, which means the range is dependent on the domain. So in order to determine whether 17 is in the range, we have to know was negative 1 in the domain. 
and if we look at it, we see it was not. Negative 1 is on the boundary of the domain, but it's not actually in it. So because negative 1, which produced 17, wasn't in the domain, 17 is not actually in the range. Now we go all the way down, and we're not actually worried about this 8 value because we see that the 8 isn't actually one of the endpoints of my range in this circumstance. The only endpoint of the range is the 5. Okay, the 5 and the 17. We've already determined the 17 isn't actually in the range, so it won't get a less than or equal to symbol. Well, let's see if the phi, if the y value of 5 is actually in the range. Well, the only way the y value of 5 is in the range, since it's dependent on x, is determined was the x value of 1 in the domain. If the x value of 1 is in the domain, then the y value of 5 is in the range. Well, looking at this, I see that an x value of 1 is certainly in this domain. 1 is certainly well within the boundary between negative 1 and 2. So 1 as an x value is in the domain, so 5 as a y value is in the range, so there we put a less than or equal to symbol.